Hi everyone, welcome back to ASFC Physics. What we're going to be talking about today is angular velocity. Now we know that in general the formula for velocity would be your change in displacement divided by your change in time, in other words the rate of change of displacement. If you have an object which is moving in a circle, it is very useful to define the angular velocity. The angular velocity is normally given the symbol omega, and that is equal to your angular displacement, so let's call that delta theta, divided by the change in time. In other words, the angular velocity is a measure of how quickly, how big of an angular displacement you are moving along a uh, circular trajectory. Let's imagine the Earth spinning. What will the angular velocity be for a point on the surface of the Earth? Now, in one full rotation, a point will move 360 degrees on uh, with respect to the center. So 360 degrees, we need to represent that with radians, so that will be 2 pi radians. If you're still a little bit unsure about radians, browse from my channel, you're going to find a video on radians. So 2 pi radians, one full revolution, and this will happen over a period of 24 hours. So my delta t will be 24 hours. This is still not an SI unit, so what I will need to do is to convert that to seconds. So the 60 minutes in an hour, and each one of those minutes will have 60 seconds. So that's going to be 24 times 60 times 60 seconds. If I was to input that into a scientific calculator, I'm going to get a value for the angular velocity on a point on the surface of the Earth which will be approximately 7.27. Let's use two significant figures in this case. So 7.3 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 5 radians per second. Hey guys, now let's have a look at a very important question on how is angular velocity related to linear velocity. Remember, angular velocity is measured in radians per second, whereas linear velocity is measured in meters per second. If we are moving a circle, such as this object, which is uh, illustrated over here on the right, the linear velocity has a tangential direction. So that means that, let's say if the object was here, the linear velocity will be purely vertical like so. So the direction will vary depending on the position within the trajectory. Okay, well, let's imagine that this object moves a little bit. So let's say it moves from position 1 to, let's say, position 2. And let's say that throughout this movement, this object covers a distance, let's say a change of angle, delta theta. Let's calculate its linear velocity. Now the linear velocity will be equal to your total displacement divided by the time that this, uh, that this occurred. So this total displacement will actually be this arc length like so. Now if we remember from maths, arc length is equal to r times your change in angle, the angle that was uh, superintended by this, um, by, this, by this arc. So this is going to equal to the radius multiplied by delta theta, like so, divided by delta t. Well, hang on a minute, have a look at this. So delta theta over delta t, this is actually our angular velocity, the very definition of angular velocity. So this is going to equal r times omega. So the linear speed v is actually equal to r omega. And this is one of the most fundamental formulas in understanding circular motion. Okay folks, so let's have a look at an example. We have a CD which has a diameter of 120 millimeters. Just be careful they've given us the diameter, not the radius, so we'll probably need to have it later on. And it's rotating at 500 revolutions per minute. Now what this means is that the CD does 
500 complete revolutions in 60 seconds. Find the angular and linear velocities at points 1 and 2. Okay, folks, this will be a perfect opportunity for you guys to pause this question and uh, attempt this independently. Okay, now let's have a look at the solution. Now, first of all, the angular velocities at both of these points will have to be the same. We don't have a part of the CD suddenly overtaking um, another point. So both point one and point two, let's say that they move at a small distance in time, um, they're gonna have to have uh, traveled with the same angular displacement. We can see that if we were to just use a ruler and just connect that like so. So they both would have been displaced by some angle theta from the um, from the origin. Okay, well um, what is actually their angular velocity? Let's calculate that. So uh, we can say that our angular velocity will be the same. at point one and two and let's just calculate that so omega is equal to our angular displacement divided by our time okay now how can we convert revolutions per minute to radians per second let's think about this if we have our 500 revolutions per minute that means that in one minute we cover 500 full revolutions so our angular displacement will be 500 multiplied by 2 pi because one full revolution is 2 pi or 360 degrees and we have 500 of them and this occurs in one minute which is 60 seconds and if we put that into a calculator, 500 times 2 pi divided by 60, we're going to get 52.36. In this case, we're just going to be using two significant figures, so let's just leave it at 52 radians per second. Now the linear speeds though of point 1 and 2 are going to have to be considerably different. The reason for that is in the same unit of time at one point 1 travels let's say from here to here it covers this arc length whereas point 2 in order to go through the same angle is going to have to cover a much larger distance. Let's calculate the linear speed at point one to begin with. So uh, let's say linear speed. And let's say that at point one, we're gonna call that V1. This is going to be equal to R omega, which will be, in this case, R is 15 millimeters. So it's gonna be 15 milli uh, stands for 10 to the power of minus three multiplied by omega, which is 52 radians per second and uh, if we put those into a scientific calculator it's going to be 15 times 10 to the power of minus 3 multiplied by 52 this is going to give us 0 0.78 meters per second ms to the power of minus 1. now let's do exactly the same for point 2 so v2 will be R omega which um, the diameter is 120 so that means that this full distance let's draw that in red from here to the edge this will be 60 millimeters so uh, please don't forget to divide by 2 and um, let's finish the calculation so this will be 60 times 10 to the power of minus 3 multiplied by the same angular speed remember both points have the same angular speed but different linear speeds so times 52 and once again let's uh, put that into a scientific calculator so it'll be 60 times 10 to the power of minus 3 times 52 which is going to give us 3.1 
two meters per second. So this is uh, really, really um, interesting. The, the farther away you are from the center of rotation, the more distance you need to cover in the same amount of time, so the linear speed increases. Okay, folks, so hopefully angular velocity makes sense now. If there are any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below and please consider subscribing.